Hi everyone, and welcome to our latest episode of Popgate's Corner. This week, we're doing a definitive ranking of Rachel McAdams' movies. Of the movies we've seen. Which, for me, it's most of them. For Nicholas, it's not. It's a lot less. is really funny, because... I had thought I had seen a lot. Well, we've been together, like, for a for... good portion of her acting career, mm-hmm. and I love Rachel McAdams. I mean, Literally I, the time period she's most active. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for me, I only haven't seen like five or six of the movies, not containing, not counting the stuff that she did in Canada. Mm-hmm. And with you, like, it why was would like you? you've seen 11 movies of her. Well, to be fair, it was 12. It was 12. It's 12. And I didn't count another one that was the 13th movie because I was like, she wasn't even in. I don't want to consider it. But before we get into that, I just want to, you know, dive into something near and dear to my heart. Okay, let's hear it. And I've talked about it mm-hmm. every podcast so far, I okay. think. Um, let's hear my it. My bangs. Oh, no. Is it getting bad? <laughs> well, Is it touch and go with them? Look, I tried to style them my full across. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, <laughs> if you want to see, they did this thing. <laughs> you see that? And I couldn't get it to, like, work. And I know they're a little long. It's about that time. So I then, I'm like, okay, well, I've had curtain bangs before, so let's style them as curtain bangs. Well, then they decided that they didn't want to style as curtain bangs. Yeah. And it's specifically like this part right here really doesn't want to cooperate. I like that. It's (laughs) playful. It's fun. And if there's one person who understands bangs, it's Rachel McAdams. Oh, I thought you were going to say me. (laughs) Well, yeah, you got bangs now too. But let me tell you. I know Rachel McAdams understands bangs because I've taken a many of her pictures to hairstylists asking them to help me get her hair. So I know she understands this problem, this plight. And I'm, I just think it might also be her fault, even though this Wait, time she th- you was think not my this, hair. You think your hair right now and your bangs not cooperating is Rachel McAdams' fault? Well, I was going to say maybe not this time because she was not the inspiration behind my hair okay. this time. It was <laughs> Susie Bay. <laughs> So but, it's but in other Bay's times, fault, okay. So it's Susie Bay's fault. Susie Bay. Yeah, it's your fault that it's my your bangs fault. decided that they didn't want to cooperate. Why? With me. Why do your bangs look nice? Well, I, what I just don't understand is, look, sometimes when you get bangs, mm-hmm. what's what happens? They grow out perfectly, and they want to work with you. And it's like, yeah, right. we'll work as curtain bangs. You have a symbiotic relationship with your bangs. This time, you know, I went in, and mm-hmm. they were. She was like, okay, we're gonna trim them up. We got them trimmed. Mm-hmm. And this time, they're like, no. We're not curtain bangs, but we're also not full across bangs. Right. And I think, you know what? What? I think your struggle has humanized us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How so? Well, I mean, think about it. A lot of people look at yeah. us, beautiful people. No. And they say, man, I can't ever be them. But now you basically, you, you laid it all out there. And now they know that this look... This, all of this, <laughs> this is effort. A lot of effort. I'm wearing just copious amounts of makeup. That's not true. <laughs> I know because when I try to do makeup on you, your face is like, Bleh, get it off of me. I know, my make, my face rejects makeup. Not for this one, but like when we did our, our granny video. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makeup did not want to sit. Yeah. So we're doing Rachel McAdams and our <laughs> and top she 10. she would understand makeup as well. Yeah, exactly. So I, I have a, I have a question for you. Yes. Um. So I had a metric in going into when I was cultivating my top ten list. Mm-hmm. What was your metric? Okay. So my metric for well, I wrote down all of her movies that mm-hmm. I had seen, and mm-hmm. like I said, I've seen a lot of them. So then I went through and I starred the ones that I really loved, but I also tried to do the thing. I was like, how long was she in the movie? Right, yeah. Because there's a good amount of movies that she's been in that she's only in for like 15 minutes. Yeah. And I was like, that's just not going to do it. No. A top 10 ranking, because we can't do a definitive because someone hadn't seen half of the movies that I had. I'm sorry that we didn't, you know, spend the time to watch these movies again. That was the original plan. Yeah. Did not happen. Yeah. Well, Um, Kyle had to get a dog. Insert shot things. of his dog. I'm not going to do that. I'm editing. It's my my okay. show. All right. So I went through and then I started all the ones that I was like, okay, I feel like she had a, either a strong role or she was in it for a lot of the movie and I enjoyed the movie. Uh-huh. Um, 
And then through there, I went through and I realized that I had about 10 movies. From mm-hmm. I had a little over 10. So then I went through there and you I crossed like, them out. I did the ones that I was like. Those are definitely no's. Yeah. They're not in my top 10. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, for example, looking at you, Morning Glory. I totally even forgot about that movie. We saw that in theaters together. Right. And you did not make the cut. <laughs> <laughs> that. So much so that I was going through the list of her movies. I saw that movie. I go, I haven't seen that one today. <laughs> we saw that movie. I know. I, now has, that you say it, I'm like, oh, go, oh my God, we did. Yeah. It has Harrison Ford. has yeah. Diane Keaton. Yeah. Uh, her love interest in it is Patrick Wilson, which is like the Conjuring Universe's darling. Like everyone loves him because he's been in so many movies, but somehow he's not a celebrity. <laughs> I mean, nobody can. Nobody knows what he looks like. Yeah, but ask ask anybody off the street. Mallow, what does he look like? He doesn't know. Crazy. Dog doesn't know. And that dog never forgets a face. Um, so I just was like, "You're not gonna make it." I know she is like the star of that movie, but movies very like it just happens. <laughs> okay, yeah. and maybe some of these movies people will feel that way about as well. Mm-hmm. But these were the ones that like. Either I do rewatch quite a bit or they just are good. They're meaningful yeah. to you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, most of them are meaningful to me because I love Rachel McAdams. So I, I had a, a similar strategy to you. Mm-hmm. I, I copied uh, what I would call your methodology. Yeah. Well, because um, you asked me how I did it. Yes. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> so then I went and I wrote down I wrote down three three words. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's hear this. I All right. And these are these are the well, there are more than three words, but three phrases that I had to capture, they were important. First one was romance. Yeah. Rachel McAdams is known for her date night movies. She is. And I was like, I got to get a few of those on there. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a a must have. Second, iconic roles. Rachel McAdams has starred in a couple of iconic roles as far as the internet and meme culture and And that sort of thing goes. Crossover in some of those. Exactly. Both romance movies Mm -hmm. and iconic. Yeah. Yeah. And so a iconic romance movie, that maybe it's a little bit higher on the list than it should be. Maybe. Maybe. And the last one was the McAdams comedy factor. Because um, <laughs> she's so funny. She's very funny. Great comedic timing. Great comedic timing. Do you know another Canadian that has great comedic timing? Who is that? Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. <laughs> and unfortunately, they have not been in a rom-com together. No, and that's kind of a sin. That's yeah. one of the great... They just keep casting with Emma Stone. Yeah. I the, Look, I'm not complaining about that combo, <laughs> but I'm going to complain a little bit about that combo. Look, we love that combo. It's just we also love- We have two of Canada's sweethearts. Yeah. At their prime. Yeah. Put them together. Put them together. Anyway, so that was my that was my thing. And then uh, the whole thing, she and there, made, there's one yeah. movie in here that is way higher than it probably has any right to be, both as a quality movie and as a quality Rachel McAdams movie. Okay. But I have a sweet spot for it. Okay, I'm getting upset because I feel like I know what that is, and it's also very high for me, and I'm upset that you would even say that. Oh, it, it isn't what you think it is. Oh, okay, thank God. So don't worry. <laughs> I was like, how dare you? It, when you when you hear this one on my list, you're going to be like, what? Number three will surprise you. Okay. So. Well, I can't wait. I'm I'm pumped. All right. So let's, you ready to get started? I'm ready to get started. Okay. So do you want to, how do you want to, what's happening? Okay. We're both going to reveal our number 10 pick. We're going to go okay. 10 to one. Okay. And we'll both reveal ours and then we'll kind of discuss why we rank this year and what we think of each other's 10th pick. Okay. Sounds pick. good. Okay. Sounds good. So uh, why don't you do first? Okay. We'll go back and forth. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, my 10th pick was about time. Mine was Midnight in Paris. <laughs> okay, I also want to clarify, is this only because when you counted it down, and obviously you forgot about Morning Glory, mm-hmm. you only had 11 Rachel McAdams movies? I had tw- I had 12 movies. Yeah. And Because mid- we talked about Midnight in Paris yes. before, and you said, and my prob- I quote, I do not like this movie very much. She was in it? <laughs> no, so- <laughs> no, I, w- well, I said she was in it, but then I remembered she played one of her typecast roles, which is rich girl who meets a boy from out of town, but then she also crossed over with one of her other typecast roles, which is mean girl. So she was a mean girl who met a rich or met a boy from out of town okay. who wasn't into the rich culture. You obviously don't remember this movie because it's not true. That is true. She her, was a rich woman. She they was went a rich over woman, there with they, her they mom and dad already, and him. Yeah, they were dating already. It right. wasn't like she met a rich right. boy. That's like, no. <laughs> I'm saying. I'm saying Owen Wilson was a boy from out of town. Okay, and he had no business being in that ritzy upper crust life. That's well, why he, he went and hung like, out oh, with a bunch of artists. Fitzgerald. Yeah. But also, like, 
she's in that movie for all of maybe 10 minutes. I know. That's why I didn't. It's not my favorite movie. This is not my favorite type of Rachel McAdams role. So it's that's why it's my number 10. <laughs> well, well, I just like I can't even believe it's in the top 10. OK, I mean, I, I have over here. I crossed that. There were three other contenders. There was okay. Aloha. Yeah. Hot Chick and uh, Midnight in Paris. I actually crossed Midnight in Paris out and then I promoted it <laughs> back into the list because I was like, no, Aloha and Hot Chick. I can't put them in there. OK, look. Aloha is not also in my top 10, but as a role that she did, she was strong in that film. Okay. That film was bad, though. All right. So explain to me why you put About Time too damn low. (laughs) Okay, look. Okay. There's a subgenre of Rachel McAdam movies. Oh, this is her other typecast. So first off, you know, there's romance. Romance. So you already got that. Mm -hmm. And there's a subset off of romance. It's called Time Traveling Romance. Right. And let me tell you why About Time is so low. It's because this movie is not about Rachel McAdams. No, it's not. It's about the main character. And I do not like how she is used and treated a lot in the film. Yeah. Because in the beginning, they do it. And they really marketed this movie of like, oh, this love story. Love. But No, she's a prop. She's a prop. Yeah. And there's so many times where I get really irritated with him. Whereas my other time traveling movie, which is way higher on the list. Whoa, okay. Um. Like it isn't a it isn't like a good mutual relationship. Like it's like a you're my wife who stays home and takes care of the kids. Yeah. And they even have that bit in the movie, and I don't love it. Yeah. Um So that is why it's so low for me because it's just like it's a it's a cute film. You know, it's one of those. I know a lot of people are like, oh, you know, because he also made um that Christmas movie that people like, but now they don't like. <laughs> are you talking about Hux? Love Actually. Oh, the guy that made the movie made love yeah, actually. Okay. He, I believe so. Gotcha. And um I don't know. I just it's not one of my favorites. Look, I get it. I yeah. really liked About Time. I know you I did. totally understand your I understand that argument. And that, look, that Tom, is a Dom Hill Gleason he was like so good. I I And Bill Nye? He's one so of, good. Dom Hill Gleason is one of those actors I really love seeing on screen. Uh-huh. I think he's brilliant in almost everything that he's been in, yeah. minus the Harry Potter movies because he really didn't have that strong. I completely role. forget he's always in that. I Was know. he Percy? No, he's Bill. Wait, yeah, because he's the one that ends up with um. Fleur de Lure. Fleur de yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Her, yes. <laughs> um, the werewolf because <laughs> he gets scratched. Okay, sorry um, for some reason I thought he was Percy. No, no. Okay, you're right. Because they also kind of forget about Percy as the movies go on. I know. They um, don't even have Charlie. He's yeah. great in it. And his relationship, like you said, with Bill. Nahi. Nahi. I think that's how you pronounce it. I believe you're I've right. I've never actually heard it said. Um, is great. And if you're going to watch that film, that's what you're watching for is that yep. family dynamic. And, and it's especially a sweet role. Like, I don't feel like you get to see a lot of good father-son relationships in films, especially mm. without like the whole like, yeah, manly man. Well, like an adult father-son yeah. relationship, which and is what you get in that movie. That one's very sweet and mm-hmm. it's very tender. And I think for about time, if we're talking about Don Hill Gleason, it might be higher. If we're talking yeah. about Rachel McAdams, it's lucky it made top 10. To be fair, I did put it very low. It's not. It's not much further up, but I thought it was a good movie, so I, I, I put it up a little bit more. I get that. Because after the McAdams comedy factor, there's also movies I, I like. Yeah. And that's also my metric. Yeah, that's also my metric as well. <laughs> okay, fine. All right. All right, Acceptable. Number, nine. number nine. I'm not sure how I feel about this looking back on it, but it's too late. The Vow. Wow, that made it in your top ten. <laughs> I didn't. I, oh god! I told you I cut out hot chick and aloha. Morning glory is above the vow for me. Oh my gosh, the vow, <laughs> which is as you know, a knockoff of Fifty First Dates. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what's yours? Mine was the Family Stone, which I know you have not. seen. I haven't seen. Yeah. Is it good? I like it. Okay, that's great. Uh, we'll watch it for <laughs> Thanksgiving this year. It's the perfect Thanksgiving movie. Is it a Thanksgiving movie? Yes. Well. I think it might, it's been a while, but I remember she plays like the little sister in the film. Okay. And she's probably my favorite character in the film. All right. But it's like another family dynamic. I believe Diane Keaton's the mom. Uh-huh. Luke Wilson's in it. Oh, that's Sarah a great Jessica cast Parker. already. Yeah. Like it's a, it's a stellar cast and it's just one of those kind of like family slice of life dramas. I wish I had more movies, if I'm being honest. I know. I wish wish that you would have watched Family Stone. This came out before we got together, and I watched it with my mom. And if it's on TV Mm -hmm. and I'm, like, hanging out with my family, I will watch it. Yeah. So. Well, it sounds like a good... So, what's... So, 
Let me read the plot synopsis. Well, don't even... I want you to just tell me what it is. I don't want you to read well, it. Well, look, the film is about Sarah Jessica Parker meeting uh, her fiancé's family for the first time. Okay. And it doesn't go well. Oh, no. And she does not end up Wait, with... Is, is Rachel McAdams, is she part of the fiancé's family? family? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. And Sarah Jessica Parker does not end up with the guy that she comes home with. Oh, no. Yeah, it's... Is Rachel McAdams on board with the switch? Does she not like her brother? I don't think she likes Sarah Jessica Parker and him together, but mm. Sarah Jessica Parker does end up with someone. So it it's just one of those. We, we're going to have to watch it. Because you had to be there. It, like I said, it's a complicated family slice of life drama. Yeah. Um, On par with that Christmas movie we watched this year with Kristen Stewart and um, Mackenzie... I can't remember her name. And all of them. Allison Bree's also in it. She's her sister. Oh. Think of that. Oh, oh. Think of how that kind of dynamic family messiness was. And that's kind of like the family stone. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I like it. There you go. That and would be a fun movie for me to watch. Yes, I love I movies about really families. Like, you do. And I yeah. think you would really like this movie. It would definitely replace the Val for you. <laughs> you think so? I do. I put it pretty high. Oh, I think it would. Anyway. Uh, Let's hear about why the vow was at number nine for you. Why the vow was at number nine for yeah. me? Well, because of two things. One, it is a romance movie through and through. It, it, it is was one of the solid. Movies. We saw that together in yeah. theaters. It is a perfect date night movie. Yeah. Uh, like it's got everything you want in it. Mm -hmm. a, a handsome leading man, a lovely leading lady. I've never been in Channing Tatum, yeah, but he was in a lot of romance movies during that time. He was a big deal. Because he was like in Dear John. Hang on, wait, yeah. 2009 but the ad i watched the trailer for that movie yeah. today the ad, it goes rachel mcadams from the notebook and then it goes it chain him from, from dear, dear john because that movie yeah. had just come out yeah. 20 the 2010s the beginning We're of that decade channing tatum channing tatum was a hit and he the was. ladies loved him and that's why that movie exists it is perfect yeah. perfect encapsulation it is sort of the the worst version of like the notebook rich yeah. girl meets girl for, guy yeah, from out of town it was totally like that nicholas sparks type oh of. yeah but yeah. it was one of those things that um i remember when we watched it and i was like oh, i really don't care for tanning chainham but i love rachel mcadams and we have to support her right yeah <laughs> and the other aspect of it is i really like the 50 for its day stangle you do i think that i thought that was a cute movie uh the fact that it has tatiana masolani in it what always, yeah, she plays his like best friend who works in the Gosh, music studio. I didn't even think that that was her. Yeah. Wow, that was I but that know. was before she had done Orphan Black. So I, know. I don't know actors or actresses. <laughs> All right, All right. <laughs> number eight. Number eight. That's you. You do the evens. Uh, the Notebook. Wow, this is really low. Yeah. So number eight for me was Spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> totally different direction. So the Notebook that is really really low. Why is that so low? Because I loved other movies more. Uh huh. And of the romances. Oh no, when it comes to like romances without any comedy in it. Yeah. My other one is way further on the list. This is like my only other. This is your only iconic romance movie in the list? Wow. That is straight like drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I did an ad. I didn't add the You vowel. didn't add the drum? Okay. I didn't add uh, Morning Glory. Uh -huh. I already went over this. I totally, I don't even remember the plot of Morning Glory other than. She's a network producer. That's what I, I don't even remember. <laughs> Harrison Ford, what is he? Is He He the, was like one of the he's anchors a TV guy. and he brings them like the two. Why we keep talking, that's not on either of our lists. Why are we talking about it? Because I feel like it, it's so, I can't believe, I feel like people have forgotten that it exists and for some reason I just can't let that happen. It's not okay. in my top all right. 10, but it so, can't be forgotten. All right, so. So the notebook yeah. is an iconic thing. It is. It and is. it was my second Rachel McAdams movie. My first one being the hot chick, even though, she, once again, she was only in it for like 10 minutes. So it's not in the list. Okay. In my top 10 list. I, I'll argue, because the notebook's slightly higher on mine. Yeah. And I'll argue about why I think the notebook deserves to be there when we get there. Yeah. Look, I the notebook is good. Yeah. Of the Of the Nicholas Sparks movies that have come out. It is the only good one. Okay. I also no, like I, how I totally they agree. changed it because I ha haven't read a lot of Nicholas Sparks books. It's just not my type of genre. But I did read the notebook after the film 
And I know that they had like a sequel book to the notebook and there's some controversy with Nicholas Sparks fans where they don't like that they changed the ending. Mm -hmm. But I like that they had the ending where they died together. That's sweet. I think it's sweeter. Yeah. I don't care about the sequel because I didn't read it. (laughs) Yeah. So for me, I was I was happy. Um, It's a very sweet movie. It's very iconic. Canadian darlings, Ryan Gosling, Rachel McAdams, they're explosive on scene together. They have great chemistry. We obviously say, saw that played out since yeah. they dated for a few years after that. Yeah. Um it just it's just lower for me, not because I don't like it, because out of I truly think I I enjoy it. It's just one of those I was like movies I would rewatch. It's lower on the list for me. Okay, that's fine. I mean, you're missing some major points that we need to talk about, but I'll address those later. Is I'm a, it I Ryan want to Gosling? No, no, no. It, okay. It's not always about Ryan Gosling. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> it's not always about Ryan Gosling. <laughs> um, I put Spotlight, and uh, I like Spotlight. I think it's a pretty good movie. Yeah. Um, she plays a pretty big role in it. Uh, all of the every I think Michael Keaton probably has him or Mark Ruffalo. Are probably like the. I'd say Mark Ruffalo is the lead of that film. Yeah, those they have the the most screen time, I think. But mm-hmm. she's good in it, and everything's good in it. It rates very low, giving the content on the McAdams comedy factor. She's it's a very quiet role, but yeah. she plays it very well. Like yeah. her mannerisms, the way that she like she takes a role, and she, this is what I love about her, and what I just like. I hate that it's not noticed more, or that she mm-hmm. doesn't get these types of roles more and maybe that's i need to watch disobedience i know that's one of the other roles where she has this kind of quiet yeah but she has a strong presence despite not having a lot of talking point like there's not a lot of talking in the film specifically from her particularly from her your choice i was trying to combine them yeah um but she's still like you her presence is known and you feel it Oh, yeah. And uh, so, yes, I understand why it is where it is for you because it's number seven for me. Oh, is it? Okay. (laughs) So you just moved it up one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it it felt like it needed to be here, but I felt like it wasn't like when you think of Rachel McAdams, it isn't the role that you think of. It was between the notebook and Spotlight for me. Yeah. But I remember being so excited for Spotlight. I dragged us to the movie theater and it was like a snowy, icy night to go see it. Yeah. And... It is like if it's on TV, I will rewatch it. I think it's a very good movie. But like you said, she doesn't have a huge role. Mm. It's a quiet role. So we yeah. don't get her typical like, but she's still strong in it. And I still think the story is compelling, which right. is why it is at seven for me. No, that makes total sense. Yeah. And like, I, I really liked it. I, the only reason that it's at eight for me is because at seven for me is about time. Uh, <laughs> Because I, I decided to put the vow in here, and I guess that messed everything up. Yeah, so. you, you just destroyed your own list. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So what's your number seven? Spotlight. Oh, it's the... <laughs> all right. So, yeah, I guess we've we've talked about we've talked about about time. We talked about spotlight. So I guess let's just roll on in number okay. six. Okay. You can go first. Oh, I can go first this time. Yeah. Okay. So number six for me is the Notebook. Okay. And uh, the reason that I put it here, and I was kind of like you, the, there, are, there are a lot of movies that have come out since that I think are better movies that I enjoy more. Um, she, yeah, she's great in it. It's got Ryan Gosling in it. It's a great movie. <laughs> Ryan but, Gosling. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just want to make sure that's said one more time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, I don't think his name is said often enough on this show. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing for me, and this is why I think it's so important. This goes back to my iconic uh, and it's an metric. iconic, yeah. It is the seminal romance movie for the 2000s. Mm-hmm. I think every movie that came out after that one did in 2004 tried to emulate the style and the feeling of The Notebook, including movies that she's in. Let every me, single movie. Let me tell you a story. Every single movie. Let me tell you a story. Don't tell me this story. Speaking of the Val. Yeah. And starring Channing Tatum. Yeah. Well, once upon a time, he was married to his co-star from Step Up. Yeah. Jenna Dewan. Uh huh. And this was their big, like, he did all the media circuits. It's why he was so excited to star in The Vow with Rachel McAdams. Is yeah. Because they loved that movie together. The Notebook? The Notebook. And uh-huh. he talked about how uh-huh. when they watched it together, she turned to him crying and was like, Will you promise that we'll die together? Oh my God. <laughs> and now they're divorced. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> you know? That was a lot. I know. <laughs> so. But that's what I'm saying. That movie puts that thought into people's head. Yeah. That movie is what 
we as a collective audience has decided love looks like. Yeah. And it, it hasn't gone out of the conscious, though, no. like traditional romance movies like that. I don't think they're like they're still they haven't ever hit that level of popularity. Ever no, again. they still try to recreate it. And you just can't. It was no. so iconic no. for that moment. Yeah. And everything else is just a poor attempt to make it happen. Exactly. Yeah. It is. It is the romance movie. Yep. Um, I think that there were probably romance movies before that. Um, and that like dominated that era, but the notebook is the start of this era and we haven't had the next seminal romance movie. This is what a romance movie is. And every movie copies that we haven't had that. I, I don't know if we ever will. I think I the know. notebook killed the romance movie because of just how good it was at being one. So for me, my number six was Red Eye, which you also haven't, haven't seen. seen. Um, so it was I have one no of Wes Craven's last films. Uh huh. Um, if you know anything about me, you know that I love the Scream You're franchise. You're a big fan of Wes Craven. And we will later on be doing a whole dive into the Scream franchise. Into the Scream universe. Yes, because I love the Scream universe, and I'm super excited for the new one, but I'm also scared for it. But all of them. I rewatch them. Like, every October, we rewatch all of those yeah. movies. Um, and we watch her favorite ones probably a few more times, which is like... What is that? One and two? Those are your two favorites? I, well, or do you I like love, Scream 3 a lot? I like Scream 3 a lot, yeah. too. The only one that we don't watch as much, and I still really like it, but you don't, which is why we don't watch it as much as Scream 4. Yeah. I've even watched all the Scream TV series. Like, yeah. this is a universe I really, really love. Um, but s- pausing, because we're not talking about Scream. We're talking Stop about- it! <laughs> we're talking about Rachel This is the Morning Glory podcast, okay? <laughs> Justice for Morning Glory, a movie that's not Glory. in either of our top ten. Why not? Well, because it's not like that great. Okay, so talk about okay. Red Eye. Red Eye. Red Eye was super great. Um, Ra- so Wes Craven, you have Rachel McAdams, and you have Killian Murphy, who is also in Batman Begins as the. We're not talking about Batman Begins. No, I get that, but I'm saying this was like it had all the makings of this iconic horror movie, yeah. and for people, it just didn't catch on. Yeah. I will. It's kind of clunky in some areas. But it has that Wes Craven um, touch of this is so ridiculous, but I'm into it. Gotcha. Um, that's why I love it. It's like the the movie. The movie is aware that it's a movie, yes. but the characters in the movie aren't. Well, you you know, I love a lot of like horror thriller movies that have this kind of like that's the Scream franchise that's mm-hmm. ready or not. Mm-hmm. That's this film falls into that. Yeah. So this is this is like if you like want to get into my sweet spot, you give me a. Horror movie that plays on the tropes and it has this kind of cheesy humor, but also it's like somehow really good. But all of the characters are a hundred percent serious while they're in the movie. Yes, I that those are those are the best scary movies, honestly. That like is as Red far Eye. as like being, I feel like I you know. would love Red Eye. I probably would. So I'm so I feel like all of these movies on here that you that when I've did Red about, Eye come out? It came out like what two thousand six seven? Yeah, I think so. So here's the thing. Here's where I was at in my life journey. Let's hear. I was, the white noise had just come out. And oh, I said I was yeah. never going to watch a scary movie ever again. And, your defense, and then I didn't until we scary. started dating. Yeah. So there you go. My mom loves scary movies. And I therefore also kind of love scary movies. Um, but I'm really picky with scary movies. Mm. This was one of them. Like I said, it just has that. Um, did you watch it because Rachel McAdams was in I it? I did. Okay. Because I loved Rachel McAdams already. This movie, when it came out in theaters, because I lived in a really small town that didn't have a movie theater. I was uh-huh. like, oh, I can't wait for it to come out on DVD for us to rent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, heavens. I can't oh, wait. Because <laughs> I lived in a really small town. So it was just one of those. It was a drive to the movie theater. <laughs> we had to drive across town into the. Elk City. And my mom was also pumped for this movie. So because it was Wes Craven and mm-hmm. it was a horror movie because we all we loved Wes Craven. He also did this movie called Cursed. And uh-huh. Oh, my God. It is the most ridiculous. I'm going to have to make you watch that one as well. Okay. But this is about Rachel McAdams. Yeah. And I don't like that they we're doing the scary movie podcast now. It Well, I have nothing to talk about. <laughs> that movie is not scary. It's really <laughs> it's really stupid. It's about werewolves. Uh huh. And. There's this very iconic scene, and I hope that it still cracks me up as much as it did when I was a little kid. But this is about Red Eye, yeah. and there's nothing really like funny, funny about this movie. Which uh-huh. the movie's just—it's so ridiculous that it's kind of funny. It's like tongue in cheek yes. funny the whole time. Yeah, it's like, oh, I gotta catch this Red Eye because I have to go get to my dad. And yeah, I meet this guy, and like, oh, we're having this cute bubbly situation, right. and now he wants to murder me. Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, it's but classic... it's also like every girl's worst nightmare. Right. It's classic meat cute. Turns yeah. bad. <laughs> classic meat cute, and it turns really bad. Yeah. He's like, oh. But so we'll have to watch that. Let's go to number five. Number five. I want to see if our number five is the what's, same. Okay. What's your number five? No. Oh yeah, it is. Mean Girls. Nope. Wow. Time Traveler's Wife. What? Yep. Oh my god. I was worried about this. Oh, why? Oh. Get it out. Let it out. Let it out. Oh, why would you do that? I'm sorry. I- I'm so upset. It's okay. I can't continue this podcast. No, anymore. you you have to. <laughs> I th- look this is there's my thing mm-hmm. is, is it romantic yes yeah is it iconic yeah. yes it, it ranks very low on the mcadams comedy factor well it's because it's a drama exactly but are m- funny movies <sighs> more importantly more importantly yeah i feel like it suffers a little bit from the same thing that we talked about in about time i think it does better than what about time does no i'm not say- <laughs> obviously i agree with you it's much higher on my list <laughs> But what I'm saying is that I think that she can p- sometimes be the vehicle for the uh, for Henry and his role in the movie. I get that. And I think that but and it, yeah. I think that's just generally true. If you read the book, <laughs> if you read the book, the book is so good. It's it's very different and that yeah. Henry kind of has his parts that are very important and, yeah. and things for Henry. But Claire has a bunch of stuff that's happening for her. The book is definitely more. This is about two different people going through two different things. Yeah, and, they're and the together. book is very much like because the book is also hopeful for Henry because yep. I mean, the movie is because the book is like, yeah, no, <laughs> he's dead. Oh, no, I'm talking about his feet get cut off. Yeah. But in the movie, they're like, he might be able to walk again. We don't know. No. No. Um, but I, yeah, it. that's that's the only reason I rated it, ranked it low. Yeah. And like the fact that they're doing like a TV show for the Time Traveler's Wife and yeah. stuff like that. And I think that they'll get an opportunity to explore more of both Claire and Henry's characters because there's so much in the book. Yeah, there's so much. And the movie did do a disservice to Claire. Yes. Um, I, 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 I don't disagree. But I think it was like the time travel part's more interesting. So we're going to focus on Henry. But like a lot of what Claire went through and what it had to deal with, like it was basically like a montage of her dealing with that stuff in the movie. No, and, like that yeah. was the that was her most compelling moments in the book. No, like there's one, and they don't even touch on it. They don't touch on her family at all, and her family dynamic is really, really important because it plays a lot into uh, how things with Henry eventually of. turn out. Yeah. Um. But you know, and I always go back to this because I wish they would have. But I don't know how you fit all of this into a exactly. movie. But they do the thing where she loses her mom in the book, and she mm-hmm. has a really hard time with it because. Her family, she was, she came from a very rich family, so she never... Rich girl meets boy from outside of town. There you go. So she never quite knew if her parents truly loved her because she felt like she was more taken care of by, um, like, like, the her, staff that yeah. they had around. And she's clearing out her mom's study, and she ends up finding, like, all of these letters and stuff from her, and they have the scene where she's crying in, like, the study in the book because this does not happen in the movie and she's finally gets the confirmation she needs so she's able to move on yeah and it's one of my favorite parts in the book that Mm -hmm. we just don't get in the movie and 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 there's there's another part and they they don't do this very well either is uh after henry dies there's quite a few sections with claire still yeah where claire is talking about what she's going through to deal with it and all this other stuff and uh, again, like those are very powerful moments in the book. They are. And the clear that we get in the movie, I think, is a much more two dimensional, not because of Rachel McAdams, but because they just cut so much out. Yeah, because they also cut out a lot with his family. And there's a lot yeah, of there's really a ton beautiful with his dad and with his mom. And, yeah. And um, with himself. <laughs> so if there's one thing you should take away from this, it's that you should read The Time Traveler's Wife, which is my all time favorite book. It's really good. Um, So... Uh, but Rachel McAdams is still great in that. She is. She's and very good in it. She was perfect cast for that character. She is. And that's one of the things I'm upset about for the TV show is I really like Rose Leslie and I'm sure she'll be great as Claire. I don't really like Theo James and I think he's a little too young for Henry. Yeah, because Henry was much older. Than Claire. Yeah. But I mean, we also had like the crazy like we sometimes got 50 year old Henry and we sometimes got 28 year old Henry. But I think when we still first meet him, he's like 36. 
Yeah, something like that. And I mean, it depends on what you define as first meet. <laughs> yeah, I, well, you know her as an adult. Where she yeah, find, yeah, yeah, And he doesn't know her. Exactly. Um, and she's, yeah, there's like a 12-year gap between the two of them. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I really love the book and I still have a special place in my heart for the movie. For mm-hmm. me, I put Mean Girls here. It, Like you said, it's her iconic role. Yeah. Um, and I, here's the thing, Mean Girls is my number four. So yeah. it's just one up above yours. It's just one of those films like I like it, mm-hmm. but I didn't love it. Yeah. Um, but it has, Regina George is. But Regina George <laughs> is iconic. And yeah. the fact that we still constantly copy her like mm-hmm. is butter a carb. And <laughs> I I always I wanted I think when I think I found the gif I might not have. But I was like, why are you so obsessed with me when she yeah. was talking? And I don't know if I ended up finding that gift or not, but. I was there's so many lines and everyone still copies it that Tina Fey did something right and Rachel McAdams delivered it properly. Oh yeah. Like, she killed in that movie. If it was not for her cast as Regina George, which she tried out for Katie. Oh she did she? I didn't she know did. she did. Because with her personality type and kind of who she is as yeah. a person. I mean was, all of the other movies she was like the Katie in those movies. But I think this comes back hot chick. Yeah. I think this comes back in my opinion, to the McAdams comedy factor. Yeah. I think she is, in my opinion, better as a comedic actress than she is as, like, the darling in a romance movie. I feel like At least she's, that's what I enjoy more. Besides, like, because The Notebook, I mean, I don't know. She's so iconic in it. Yeah. I don't believe that she's been given as strong of roles in any of her dramas as she has been in her comedic In her comedies, roles. yeah. Yes. So... That's my opinion on the yeah, matter. I would like to see her actually given a powerhouse drama. <laughs> yeah. Because this girl deserves everything. Well, I mean, it's kind of like True Detective, which yeah. isn't a movie. But she was one of the best parts of her season of, Yeah, she of was True like Detective. the only good thing about she that She was very season. good. So. So. Um, and she, you know, she played somebody who had been washed out and like was done with shit. So. I think that she obviously has the range to do that. They just don't want to give her the chance. Or maybe she just doesn't like that role. I don't know. That's a great point. I don't know. She's like, I like being the bubbly romantic. So now that we know that you're number four. My number four is Mean Girls. Yeah. My number four, and I keep flipping them. Uh So I think I'm going to go ahead and and flip flip them. Oh, God. You've seen it here first, folks. It's live. Top 10 reshuffling. Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. I actually didn't put Sherlock Holmes on this list. I understand not putting Sherlock Holmes in the Book of Shadows, but she was pretty strong in Sherlock Holmes. (sighs) She had a a decent role. I mean, she it, had a, in, in terms of the Sherlock books and the the Irene one Adler everyone, is a big deal. Yeah, well, in like two stories. Yeah, it's just she's like the only um, woman who ever kind of hung around. No, I I captured made, Sherlock's attention. Captain Sherlock's attention because she played the game as good as he did. Right, and in the terms of that, I think Rachel McAdams did that perfectly in Sherlock Holmes. No, I think she's a really really fun character um, in that. I again. I really wish she would have played a bigger part, and I didn't include it, this in the list. I guess I, I guess I've seen fourteen movies with her, or if you count both of the Sherlock Holmes, fifteen. Yeah. But I, I didn't think to include her because I was like, the movie is so much about uh, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. and uh, what's his name? Uh, what? Uh, Jude Law. Jude Law as Watson, and so I was just like, she plays just such a minuscule role. But I didn't think to include it. So here's it. this big web that, okay. Okay, let's see this big web. None of these people are connected. It's just like things that are happening. Okay. So Rachel McAdams uh-huh. starred in Sherlock Holmes and the Time Traveler's Wife. Uh-huh. The director or, of the, sh- or the like the whatever you want to call him, the overhead, the showrunner of the Sherlock Holmes BBC series and the Time Traveler's Wife BBC series is Stephen Wolf- Wolfwiant. Uh huh. And so here's Rachel McAdams and the universe she's already created. And here he is trying to come in here and take her role. Oh, and, my God. Yeah. I didn't really like that's the Sher- a conspiracy. I know. I'm just saying because I didn't really like the Sherlock Holmes BBC series. And don't even try to come at me because I tried watching that series like you four did. times. I think it's because you, you. I don't really like, like Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict that Cumberbatch. Much. He's grown on me because I love Imitation Game. Yeah, that was um, a pretty good movie. I do. Doctor Strange is a movie that Rachel McAdams is in that it did not make the list because A, she's in it for 10 minutes and they underutilized her mm-hmm. in every bit that they could have yeah. and it was really disappointing and that's why I'm hesitant of Doctor Strange 2. I'm only interested because of the Scarlet Witch, but how better are they going to take Rachel McAdams this time? I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Who <sighs> but knows? I didn't like Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange mm. until Infinity War. Right. And Like he's been better in outside of his movies. Yeah. 
So we'll see about Doctor Strange too. So um, yeah. So we'll see about Time Traveler's Wife because I don't know. I don't know if I like this guy's. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that I like his directions. <laughs> but I'm excited that it's getting a TV show because I'm hoping that they'll get to show the things in the books that I cared about that they could not do in a two hour movie. Oh yeah. Whew. I think they can. So that that was the big web that I just wove. Well, I that's could... a big web. I know. That's a big web to weave. <laughs> Did and you, you wove it so well. You said Mean Girls was yours? Mean Girls was mine. And we kind of dove into that. Yeah. So number th- three? Number three. I'll I'll let you do this. This You can do number three. Eurovision. Ooh. Okay. What was your number three? My number three is Wedding Crashers. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you describe Eurovision. And I, I, full disclosure, Eurovision is my number two. Okay. So, so that I was curious if it was going to be high on the list for you. I now I'm starting to think that we have the same number one. I'm pretty sure we have the same number That's one. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. <laughs> it's like we're together or something. <laughs> it's like we really... Oh my God, you're my wife. <laughs> oh my God. So, so why Wedding Eurovision? Cru- I'm just going to say real quick, Wedding Crushers did not make the cut for me because I watched this movie a long time ago. And this I movie was- came out... Hang on. The movie came out in 2005. Yes, which was... So where were you in life in 2005? So for some reason, even though I did know and really enjoyed Rachel McAdams and I was very young Mm -hmm. um, during that time, I did not realize that it was her in the movie. And I think Isla Fisher, Isla Fisher has a stronger role in that film. She does. And I remember her more. Uh Uh-huh. And I also, as um, Alex touched on last week, I'm not a big Owen Wilson fan, <laughs> which is probably also why I didn't like Midnight in Paris very much. Right. Um, I w- at this time in my life, I was a pretty big Owen Wilson fan. Most people were. We've uh, already had this fight about Rush Hour Shanghai versus Shanghai. Night. Night. <laughs> yeah. But this isn't an Owen Wilson podcast. Okay. This is a Rachel McCaffrey. All right. <laughs> um, I chose Eurovision because this movie... Made me so happy last year. Oh my gosh. And it rates so high in the McAdams comedy factor. It's and like here's the thing. As a Will Ferrell movie, it's weak. Yeah. It's he Will Ferrell actually makes like I <laughs> yeah. was like, I kinda don't want you in the movie, yeah, guy. You suck. What? <laughs> but Rachel McAdams was phenomenal. She was so good. And I'm just like, this is why I love Rachel McAdams. Oh my god, she was so good. She was so good. This brings me to my my final Rachel McAdams typecast. Okay. It is the bright-eyed every girl. That's exactly, yes, that is what she, mm. and she's so sweet, and she's so adorable. I just, like, you can't get enough of her in this film, no. and I know it's not actually her singing, but the soundtrack on this film it's so is good. so phenomenal. Like, <laughs> yeah, the song, the all yeah, of the songs, yeah. ding, ding dong, ding dong, but, like, her heart song that she sings at the end, like, oh my gosh. every time I watch it, I cry. But, like, her performance is so good throughout the movie that you're so invested there at the end. Yes, and yes. So, yeah, again, it's not her actually singing Icelandic. But, but you're still, like, you're just captivated because but, uh, yeah. you know her, like, once again, Will Ferrell's not great in this movie, Mm-mm. but Rachel McAdams is so it's good. So she good. brings so much of the heart and soul to this movie and i think it's one of the reasons why it's a lot of critics didn't love it but so many people did yeah. because it just felt good in it, a time when everything was bad it felt good it felt so good it felt so good it i don't know it's it's a great movie it's so good. i absolutely love it but you talk about wedding crashers you want me to talk about wedding crashers? i do i want to hear so i i want to i want to reiterate this movie came out in 2005 <laughs> okay I want to reiterate that. And here's where I was. I'm going to pause. The only reason it did not make my list is because I didn't have a chance to rewatch it and see how I felt. Okay. Because it could be in here if I did, but I didn't have time. I don't know if your opinion will be changed. Yeah, because I don't care for old Owen Wilson. Yeah. Old Owen Wilson. So this was 2005. This was around the time period that Vince Vaughn was making movies. And like the gimmick of those movies was Vince Vaughn talked a lot. And that was the joke. (laughs) Yeah. He wasn't funny. He wasn't funny. It was just like he just said a thing and you're like. I guess that was supposed to be funny. That was yeah. funny. I'm I'm entertained, and uh, that was a big gimmick of this movie. It was, and uh, I was. It was 2005. I was just about to go into high school. I was a uh, bright-eyed pre-freshman, and uh, this movie was probably the first movie that I can remember that I saw a lot of boobs in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
I, I wrote down, the, I was like, there's a song, there's literally a montage at the beginning of the movie where it's just women falling on their backs on beds and with their boobs or bras or whatever, and it's sung to Twist and Shout, which is a famous song That's that right. everybody plays. At, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. That, you're right. If I rewatch this, I most definitely with that scene alone, is this, I probably would <laughs> This is on. already making you like, yeah, wait I'm a minute, like, I don't know if this movie's for me. Yeah. And uh, I, I also, I didn't have a lot of crushes like on celebrities and stuff like that and everything. This movie came out. And uh, I immediately had a crush on Rachel McAdams from this movie. And like, Isla Fisher. Most Rachel McAdams I mean, was. She was probably more from Hot Rod, but. I didn't have a crush on Isla Fisher, really. Oh, I thought you did from Hot Rod. No, I mean, like, she's, I mean, she's attractive in Hot Rod and everything. But, like, Rachel McAdams, like, I was crushing on darling, her heart. Yeah. yeah, she was a darling. Yeah. And, I again, this is another movie where she's kind of a prop for Owen Wilson and stuff like that. And Isla Fisher does have the stronger role because she's got way more comedic scenes where uh she is well she gets character growth too yeah where she thinks she's one way but she's not yeah exactly yeah. but i think that you know it's just it's a really fun movie and it has a lot of nostalgic for me it we didn't i didn't see it in theaters but we had like hbo at the time and so that it was on like all like i think the summer of 2006 and stuff like that yeah i see i love stuff like that because that's like one of the reasons melanie my little sister and i uh, we love like um, Disturbia. Yeah. And yeah, I get that. Yeah. You, you find a movie on HBO and it plays all summer and you just watch it every day it comes on. Yeah. That here's this the thing. That's what kids are missing out on. <laughs> that <laughs> is right? what kids are that's missing out on. That's what's wrong with, yeah. with that's what's going to be wrong with Gen Alpha. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, we could stop it. We could we stop could, it. We could, we could it. go ahead and put movies back on HBO and make it where that's the only place that they're accessible, and so that you get that all summer. It's yeah, like, it's like yeah. there's nothing else on, so I guess I'm just gonna watch I'm Disturbia gonna watch Wedding Crashers again. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I did that. It was like all summer. Every time it came on, I was like, "Oh, this is so funny! This is so funny!" And then I was like, "Vince Vaughn is so funny because he does talk." But Rachel McAdams, <laughs> Rachel McAdams was such a sweet, lovable character. I yeah. always think about the scene where. Uh, her and Owen Wilson go on the bike ride and she kind of like talks about like uh, where she's at in life and how she's not necessarily happy with where she is and all these other things. And it was sort of like one of the first movies that I remember being like, whoa, love, you can be with someone and not really like them and that sort of thing. Because that was a big part with her with her fiance, Bradley Cooper. Yeah. And um, stellar cast, stellar cast. I don't remember who her dad was. Her dad was somebody big too you keep talking about wedding crushers and i will imdb it. imdb that for me uh because i think both her mom and her dad were big actors. i'm pretty sure but like it's uh, been forever since i've seen the movie so yeah and like i don't know like everything about the movie i really liked and uh it, it just has a nostalgic little bit in my heart christopher walken christopher walken was the dad and jane seymour okay yeah I was like, it was somebody big and it was a goofy actor yeah. to be there. So I really like the movie. I think it's touching. And again, that bicycle scene is the one that sticks out to me. It's it's either the sh- it's twist and shout scene and the bicycles. Those are the two big parts uh, that were the formative portions of me as going into high school. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. So Eurovision was my number two. What's your number two? The Time Traveler's Wife. Oh, my God. Which means I'm pretty confident we have the same number one. So Time Traveler's Wife, yeah. why did you rate it so high? Is it just because of the the Look, tie-in with the book? Yes and no. Um, okay. So this movie came out. Uh, we started dating in high school. Yeah. And this movie came out right before you went to college. Mm-hmm. And It had we been got four the, years since I'd seen Wedding Crashers. Uh, we... <laughs> Got the book for each other, and we went and saw it. And I just, it's a very sweet memory for me, similar to Up. And so I just, um, I really love it, and it holds a lot of weight for me. It's one of those, it was on Netflix, turned it on and watched it. Uh, if It's like one of, it, <laughs> I said like Up, and it's almost literally, when I'm like kind of sad, I get, I you put on. There's three movies. Time Traveler's Wife. Yep. Up. Yep. Amazing Spider-Man 2. That's it. <laughs> The trifecta. <laughs> and look, I understand that two out of the three aren't great movies. Two out of the three aren't great. Up is amazing and cannot be shamed at all. Oh, I was I was arguing that all three of them are good. I would agree with that. But, you know, sometimes when I say that to people, like, I don't know how many times where I'm like, oh, uh, 
if you you talk about about time have you watched the time traveler's wife yeah i didn't like it as much it oh. wasn't as good and that like that's a, like it's like that's if you a gut say punch. that it's a stab in my heart and that means person that cannot be trusted by caitlin <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank uh, God I didn't put about time. I was so afraid. I was like, oh, no, no, about no. To- I wasn't going to do that. That's insane. It just means a lot to me. And like we've already pointed out, it's one of those movies I put on. It's one of those books I reread a lot. Yeah. Uh, it just means something to me. And that meaning alone is what will probably prop it up forever. It's also, enough to put it in number two. I love Eric Bana and I love Rachel McAdams. <laughs> I love Rachel McAdams more than I like Carabana, but I love him as well. Yeah. So funny, funny story. Funny story. You remember that terrible movie with Jessica, Jennifer Lawrence, Jessica Lawrence, Jennifer Lawrence and Chris Pratt? Yeah. It originally was going to have Eric Bana and Rachel McAdams. Are you talking about Passengers? Yes, that one. Okay. That was originally going to have Eric Bana and Rachel McAdams. And I only know this because once again, I loved Rachel McAdams and I followed the development of that film yeah. and they both left. Oh, they left. Yeah, they were both Whoa. like, mm. so. And so we were left with story. Jennifer Lawrence and Chris Pratt. That could have been Eric Bana and Rachel McAdams wow. reuniting for a second time, and no one but me would have cared. <laughs> so. Well, honestly, they probably dodged a bullet. Yeah. They, yeah. Oh, they did because that movie was terrible. Because that movie was great, and it would have it would have taken away. It would put that on the list here. Yeah. Yeah, we can all agree that movie's really good. Right? I totally said it was great before this. Yeah, I agree. You did. All right. So All right. So I gonna... I love that we went from me talking about wedding crashers and like the formative years as a young boy, and then you were like this, a confession of our love <laughs> as your number two. Well, I one feel... of us I now see cares uh, more. And here I always make jokes about loving ten men, but it sounds like I don't have the list. <laughs> well, Ryan Gosling's right there. <laughs> yeah, Ryan Gosling is my top man and top woman. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Obviously behind you. You said obviously my top. I'm learning a lot. Now I'm learning that maybe BTS does come before you. My heart is broken. <laughs> All right. Well, Malo let's, is still number one. Okay. Let's talk. <laughs> let's talk about. Let's talk about the one thing that we can agree on. Okay. That game, game night, night is, is number the best one. Best Rachel McAdams Woo! movie. Woo! This movie's so good. It's so good. Um, I. I thought that it hit on two of the th- two of the three of my categories. I don't think it's an iconic role. I don't think everybody is like, yeah, Rachel McAdams, the game night girl. Uh, okay, maybe not necessarily uh, iconic in the sense that game night girl, but it did cement her as a comedic actress. Right, like people were like, oh, damn, we were Rachel McAdams on Mc- is really good as a comedic hmm. actress. Okay, we were so some stuff. I do think it was iconic in that sense. I, I agree. Continue. Okay, fine then. It three hit, of the it hit three. all three of them because I do think it has romance, but it's got a it's got a it, it's an evolved version of romance. Mm-hmm. Like, I, you know, like a lot of romance movies focus on the beginning of a relationship. Yeah. And I think this strongly focused on a relationship that's been in progress for a long time. And I think yeah. it was a great uh, a great illustration of what that looks like. What a what a, he- a strong, healthy relationship in progress looks like. Oh, yeah. And this is another one for me that it's just like moment in time yeah so we were living in colorado uh-huh. another state uh-huh. um i was working for a movie theater which yeah. was really funny as their marketing person um and i remember we came to this movie and i was like really nervous because i was like they message at all times of night you never know and we went to like a really late one i was like i this was during the time i didn't really go and see a lot of movies a lot because i was so worried about always being there for this company uh-huh which is funny in other ways, but we won't dive it's a, into that. It's a great irony. Yeah. Um, so we went and saw this movie. And it also was like the parallel, I feel like, almost of the idea. Because it's his younger brother. And he's like, you know, he's always just better than me. And oh, he has his, the cool, that's his older brother. Oh, is it his older brother? His I thought it was his younger brother. Yeah, he's the younger brother. He just, you know, he has all this cool life. And she's like, we're going to kick his ass. And sometimes I feel like we joke about that with your younger. <laughs> we're like, we got to kick his ass. We got to put him in his place. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. So I just love Game Night because, you know, you love movies and TV shows that you can relate to. Yeah, that reflect on yourself. Yeah. So, and I don't know. Like, it was such a fun movie. And she is so good in it. So and uh, I would say that th- this is very much her falling into the bright-eyed every girl 
category, which I think it's like she plays that so well. Super well. She's just so funny. Um, she's so relatable. Like so many scenes, the the way that she talks about something is the way that you've talked about something. Oh yeah. And I her and whole I, yoga scene is one of my favorites. It's so good because like she's like, I know this. This is mine. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> and there, there are just lots of bits, yeah, uh, that are, are that are so good, mm-hmm. and uh, and it's the one movie that I watched that I finally was like, okay, Jason Bateman's not a tool. I was gonna make, I was gonna say that as well, and it's also like the only movie that um, the Matt Damon wannabe. Oh, the the guy that shot the kid in Breaking Bad. Yeah, that guy. He's, Jesse all, Plemons. The Jesse only movie Plemons. that he is a good a guy. A redeemable character. Yeah. Yeah. Only and, one. Oh, my God. There's just so much about that movie that's so funny. Oh, it's so the, good. The, all the pl- twists and turns. Oh, and, my gosh. Like, with, even, like, the little things, like the Denzel Washington bit. Yep. And uh, it's just, it's so good. <laughs> oh, my God. I forgot about that bit. <laughs> and they show the, she finally shows the yeah. picture. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Um, so good. They were developing a sequel. I don't know if I'm curious with the pandemic of everything. I would love to see a sequel. I'd love to I see, would love to see a sequel. Again. All of yeah. those characters, because yeah. because they, they had a lot. The even their friends. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know any of their names. I just know one of them was Winston from, from New Girl. From New Girl. Um, um, their names are blanking on me as well, but I I know all of them because we've seen them in a lot of stuff. They were all hilarious. Yeah. And I would love I'd love to see all those characters back. Absolutely. Um. But Rachel McAdams, similar to Eurovision, she just shined in this role. Yeah. She just took it and that movie is hers to be. Like there yeah. I don't know. I don't feel like we get to see a lot of actresses carry this type of role. Yeah. This and is, it was kind of nice to have a very strong female performance that was reliant on just being a human. Yeah. I think mean, so much in in comedy and stuff like that, whenever you have like a, a husband wife duo, it's always it's almost always like, oh, the wife is like she's like too yeah. high strong and everyone and like in movie. this it was they kind of played it the opposite way where he was the high strong one. But they were a team. And, but they and were was, a team the whole time. Yes, like it was and that's what a lot of things when the roles are switch, you don't see it as a team. The yeah. man has to like somehow fall back in love with the woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in this it was like, no, we love each other mm-hmm. and we're going to we're going to work together yeah. the entire time. Yeah. There was no drama with their relationship. No. Everything was external and it was them as a couple dealing with it. Yeah. The only like is like their struggle was like they were having fertility problems and then she was like well it's because he keeps trying to compete with his brother so we need to <laughs> yeah so she's like i'm gonna fix so we that kick his ass i'm gonna game fix night. that <laughs> <laughs> but i love it because both of them like they play the it like they played so well into that and they did they did a great job in my opinion of doing like uh the they were perfect for each other type thing because yeah. like the opening of the movie is like how they got together and how they're so competitive and it was because they like they outcompeted one another and then they got on a team with one another and they realized, oh, we're stronger together. Yeah. So. Yeah, because they were like, no, we got to take that team down. Yeah. It yeah, was, yeah, yeah. It was super cute. And it then was you so see good. the progression of like them with their marriage and mm-hmm. doing like um, Dance Dance Hero. Yeah. And like stuff like that. And, and, and how they've always been competing with one another. And, and they have but, these game nights. Oh, it's so good. And but just, if you haven't seen it, go, go see, see it. it. What? So before, because we're, we're coming to an end, I want to I wanna do one more thing. Uh, okay. What is your favorite scene from that movie? From Game Night? From Game Night, yeah. Well, obviously you have a favorite scene. I have a favorite scene. Well, I don't, because this might take me a second, okay, so but my, you might say yours and I might be like, yeah, that's it. My favorite scene is when they're in the alleyway mm-hmm. pulling out the bullet. <laughs> and because uh, Jason Bateman gets shot in the arm earlier in the movie. I think she shoots she him. She does. She yeah, shoots she him. shoots him. Yeah, I was like, it was because of her. Doesn't think it's a real gun and shoots him. And then they're in the alley because they don't want to go to the hospital because- They don't want to explain why They don't want to explain shot. why he got shot. Yeah. And she has to pull the bullet out and she's looking up a video on YouTube to do it. Yeah. And it's just, it is just so funny. It is. It's just, the entire scene is hilarious. They're trying not to throw up. She's like looking it up on YouTube. She like keeps getting distracted by stuff. Oh my God. It's so good. It's very good. Oh, my God. And they, I'm trying to, because like. What is that? What is that? Oh, it's the bone. (laughs) It's the bone. (laughs) I love, there's so many shenanigans in this movie. There's so many shenanigans. And I'm trying to think, because I love when they go to Jesse Plemons' house, and Mm -hmm. he's a police officer, and that whole scene with, but that's like the strong Jason Bateman scene with the dog. Yeah. Oh, my God. That one's so funny. That one's sort of 
my favorites <laughs> because the they do a terrible job of uh yeah of heal of uh, doctoring up his wound. doctoring up his wound i was like cleaning his wound but that's I, right i guess that's right yeah um, mine is more stupid sounding <laughs> <laughs> uh i love all the plain stuff the plain stuff is really funny yeah I, I don't know there's just so much of that movie when she's doing the yoga stuff i just like i relate to it Oh, when Very she's trying strongly. to get them to do the yoga, like, yeah. and they're tying them up. Yeah, because yeah. she, like, doesn't believe that the gun is real. Yeah. And so she's doing all this stuff, and she tells them to get into child's pose and put their hands on their back, and they're like, how do you even do that? And she's like, like this, you idiots. <laughs> like, it's so good. Come it's on. so good. Uh, I don't know. It just... Like you said, she's an everyday woman, and yeah. they do such a good job of playing that without making it seem too no. ridiculous. Like that is what life is like. No, it, she is. She is both like perfectly grounded in that universe, and also like, is that the way you would react to that scene? I don't know. I yeah. like honestly don't know. It's it's so good. Yeah, it's so good. Well, because they think the whole thing is set up as a joke. Yeah. by his by well, his brother, his bro- his older brother. Yeah. Um. So. It just plays out so perfectly, and it was one of those, like, we saw it in theaters, loved it, Mm -hmm. came on TV, and we were like, oh, forgot how much we loved it. Bought it, watched it again after watching it on TV. And we'll probably watch it tonight. (laughs) And we'll probably watch it tonight, because it's that good. It's that good. Yeah. All right. Well. That was wonderful. I think, I'm so happy. I was really, I didn't know if we would match up anywhere (laughs) else, but I was like, I'm pretty sure we're both going to have Game Night as number one. I mean, it's so good. It's very good. And I, like I said, I thought we were going to be like in chunks we'd be, and I think we were pretty close. I didn't realize that there were, there were some movies that you threw in that I didn't even consider her for because I just thought her role was too tiny. Or you haven't seen. Or haven't seen. Yeah. And then Um, you put in roles that I was like. That was a bad movie. I'm not even going to include it on this list. See, right. here's like the list of movies I have. Uh-huh. And the stars were the ones that I was like, those are acceptable. Okay, and so the- here's my list. So you can, I crossed some movies <laughs> out. I rewrote the list down here. I crossed things out. I scribbled. Uh, I love it. Yeah. And yeah. Then, I, then I put move them into categories. So like I, ha- I had it all, man. Look, you put a lot more thought of, into yours than I did. I literally, I wrote down all of the movies of hers I saw. Then I went through and starred the ones. I wrote 10 through one. And then I did the thing where I wrote, like I was like, Family Stone is on there, but it's going to be low on the list because she, it's not a main role. Right. And then I wrote About Time and I was like, no, I like About Time less than I like Family Stone. So I'm going to switch it. And then I did that with Eurovision and Sherlock Holmes as well. I had that written down yeah. on the list where I uh, switched it because I kept it going back and forth and I ended up switching it for what you basically said. It wasn't a big role. And Eurovision, Eurovision is just so good. She's good. It's yeah. just, I like the number four, which is probably why I put Eurovision there. <laughs> because I do do that. You can't thing. do that. I can't help it. Oh my gosh. I like associating numbers all right, with things all right, I like. All right, all right. Okay. So please, if you know Rachel McAdams or Ryan Gosling personally, reach out to them and tell them that we would love to have dinner with them. Fun fact, mm-hmm. both Rachel McAdams and Ryan Gosling are Scorpios. Oh, I thought you were going to say share my birthday. I was like, bullshit. No, you know, I know Ryan Gosling, Gosling does, shares my but birthday. stop it. Not everybody can share your birthday. Rachel That's McAdams not fair. Rachel McAdams is far off. She's November 17th. So. <sighs> oh, my God. Scorpio power. <laughs> and Emma Stone's like at the beginning of November. <laughs> okay, cool. You share birthdays with everybody. Russell Westbrook. <laughs> Anne Hathaway. <laughs> anyway, that's it. You share a big birthday, though. No, we're not going to say it. We've already doxed this enough. We'll save it for later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We hope we inspired our love of Rachel McAdams towards you, and now you want to go on to Rachel McAdams' deep dive. And if so, please let us know, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and we'll see you next week when we talk about the Olympics. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>